Hello, in this video we're going to be covering the grid system. So let's get on with this now. So what we want to do is first go to the definitions file. We need to create a few more definitions for the grid. So let's just get started with that very simple stuff. First definition we're going to create is for the grid file path, aka the image itself. So I'm going to put res forward slash grid dot png. Now we're going to define the file path for the different pieces, aka noughts and crosses. So x underscore piece underscore file path. And this is going to be res forward slash x dot png. So capital X and capital O, which you'll obviously be able to see from the images as well. So the reason I'm doing four is because there's going to be a north piece, as you can see here. There's also going to be an X wind piece and an X, I mean, a north wind piece. So when a user, particularly, I mean, when the user wins, what will happen is the actual like pattern or the row, the or the column or the diagonal line that is the winning piece winning line will actually change with an animation to the winning image so it's going to look a lot better so we're going to have x piece file path this is actually going to be x winning piece file path this is going to be circle winning piece file path okay that does not yep yeah, that has fixed itself we're going to do some definitions for the pieces, so x underscore piece, I'm gonna put eight, you can put whatever you want really, as long as it doesn't conflict with anything else. One for circle underscore piece is gonna be zero, and one for an empty piece, because we need to keep track of spaces in the grid that are empty, and those are the ones we'll be able to place our pieces on. And this is going to be negative one. But again, you can do whatever you want, really. Okie dokie. So now we're going to define all the different states. And the states are going to be what state the game is in. So the first one is going to be playing. So there's going to be the, the state when you're actually playing the game. You can put pieces down. We're going to have a state for pause. So while it's this, you can't obviously play the game. And the computer wouldn't play the game, etc. We're going to have one for state one. When this is the case, I think you can guess what's going on. The, you have one, and therefore it will show things accordingly. And when it's lose, I think you can guess you've lost. The computer has one. And finally, there's going to be one for state underscore placing underscore piece. The reason there's one for placing the piece is because we're going to have an animation. And we just don't want to allow the user to place another piece on that particular area. So now what we're going to do is do a hash define for piece underscore fade underscore in underscore time. And this is going to be how long it's going to take for a piece to fade in. Save that. We're all done with that. Now what we want to do is go to the game scene header. So go to the header file we need to create some methods so what we're going to do is private we're going to do bool on touch began and for this we're going to put cocos 2d touch so what we're going to do is handle the function declarations for handling touch events and this is going to be event, so asterisk event. I'm going to copy and paste this because there's four different types of touch events. First one, on touch began returns a bool, so whether or not it's successful, whereas the others do not. It is just void. The parameters are all the same, but the method is going to be on touch move, so when the user has placed the finger on the screen, but they're moving. Untouch ended, so when they lift up the finger, then untouch cancelled, which is essentially when something takes over the 
control of your device like your phone so it could be if you got a phone call coming in and it will be cancelled a lot of time you probably handle in a similar way to ended but that's the way you would do it if you wanted something different so now what we're going to do is set up the grid rectangle so we can detect which space the user has actually clicked so void in it grid rects and we're going to do void in it grid pieces and what we're going to do now is create methods and get some more space here i'm going to create a method for checking if the user has clicked an empty grid space if so place their piece so void check and place piece for this we're going to need cocos to the touch which we'll be passing in based on our touch now we're going to check if the user has won so void check win this is going to take Three different, I mean, two different parameters x and a y parameter, and now we're going to ch check a particular set of pieces. So, void check three pieces for match int x1, int y1, int x2. If you can guess what well, where we're going with all of this. Int y2, so let's just copy and paste this. So we need one for y3 as well, aka the different positions for three different spaces. And now we're going to create some variables. First one is going to be our grid sprite. Next, we're going to create a 2D array of Rex which will be interacting with AK okay, that's what we'll be detecting to to see if the player has touched a particular grid space so this will be grid spaces and this is going to be a free by free now we're going to do a Copas 2D array of sprites so grid pieces and this is essentially what's actually going to be this Blade on our grid. I'm going to do int grid array, which is also free by free, and this is going to keep track of the individual pieces. So obviously, this is the visual piece that you'll see. This is going to be used for touch. This is essentially just the background of the grid, the actual free by free grid, and this will keep track of what's in what particular piece int turn so whose turn is it is it ours aka the user or is it the computers then int game state remember all those states that we created in definitions right here that's what that variable will be handling so now what we can do is go to the game scene dot cpp and what we're going to do is i think we can actually remove this we need to include the definitions dot h and now in our init method what we need to do is scroll down scroll down here we are going to add a centered background so sonar cocos helper ui colon colon add centered background and for this i'm going to put game underscore background underscore file path and for some reason that is not picking me up let's go to definitions ah i didn't add another background here and for this it is the same as the main menu background the aka the yellow background but the reason we're doing a separate define is because if later on we want to change that background we don't have to go through the code and change it or we don't want to use this one definition that have to change our code later on we just change the definition file that's a great point great reason of using some sort of definition file so this should be i think you can guess what it should be game background underscore file path 
for the layer passing this this is what it's going to be adding that image to now we're going to initialize grid sprite so grid sprite uh, let me sort out this we've got a bit more space to work with when we're scrolling grid sprite equals sprite colon colon create and for the file path it's going to be grid underscore file path now we're going to set the position which is going to be centered on our screen so grid sprite equals no i mean sorry set position and for this position we need to center it so it's going to be sonar coca sulfur ui colon colon get screen center like so we need to add this as a child to our layer so this add child and we specify grid sprite we need to now initialize the grid recs and grid pieces for now we're going to call the methods here we'll be implementing them very soon so in it grid recs in it grid pieces so now that we've done that what we're going to do is by default initialize the grid array which keeps track of all the different pieces that are on our grid so we're going to loop through it and just assign an empty space to it because by default the grid is going to be empty so int x equals zero x less than three x plus plus and what i'm going to do is copy and paste this we need one inside of it because remember it's a two-dimensional array and i'm going to rename this to y y y y y y and i'm going to put grid array x y equals empty piece and now we need to set whose turn it is so i'm going to put turn equals x underscore piece so that's going to be the first turn i'm going to put the game state as state underscore playing so by default you are playing the game is your go we need to set up our touch event method so we do event listener touch one by one aka it's just single touch we're not interested in multi-touch for this listener equals event touch listener one by one colon colon create now we're going to do listener set swallow touches true and now we just need to actually attach the methods to our touch event listener by doing listener on touch began equals cc underscore callback Two, and the number always refers to how many parameters that particular method takes you don't need to pass in any parameters because this will do, do it automatically so it says for the class name on touch touch on touch begin began I should say and now we need to put a comma then this and now what we're going to do is copy and paste that for moved ended and cancelled you can guess what we need to change change this to moved change this to ended and this one to cancelled and then finally we just need to actually add our event listener to our director so to do that to do director because otherwise we won't handle any touch get instance so it gets our instance get event dispatcher add event listener with event listener with scene graph priority and the listener is listener let me specify the node which is going to be this okay it's listening in it listening to it based on this particular node aka our scene now we can start implementing the different methods from our header so first of all i'm just going to copy and paste these it'll just be quicker this way than writing it out myself but 
first of all, for curly braces, curly braces, curly braces. And now we need to do game scene. So game scene colon colon. Do the same for the other three touch methods. And for on touch began, we're just going to return true. You need to return true if the function wants to swallow the touch, aka doesn't want to allow the touch to be propagated to items below it. And on touch moved, we're not interested in. We're only interested in ended, but all the other ones are implemented. So if and when you want to use those particular different touch types, you can very easily. And for this, the moment we're just going to say if state plane equals game state, then we're going to do check and place piece, and we pass in our touch event so we can actually get the position because that's going to be very crucial like so we can actually get where we're touching it and that's it for this on touch ended for now if if we're playing it and we've pressed what we're going to do is call a method which will handle all the different placing of this cool stuff so what we're going to do now is initialize the grid rects and initialize the grid sprites as well you know what i'm actually going to leave that for the next video i'll keep these two videos separate because we've done quite a lot already and in the next video we'll be looking at the grid the grid but we'll be initializing all of our rays so that is it for this video if you have any questions feel free to post them on my education platform sonarlearning.co.uk if you want to check out the source code feel free there will be a github link and as usual, thank you for watching and I hope you have a great day.